We're going to start with a definition. This is a very important definition, so I'm going to write it down completely. And then we're going to like talk about the definition, and then we're going to use this definition to actually do some proofs. We're going to be doing proofs today, like, or at least proof-like problems, right? So this is the definition of linear dependence. So we say a set of functions, so a set of functions, and so we have to give the functions names. You can also say a list of functions, but I'll say a set of functions, and I'll call them f sub 1 of x to f sub n of x, is said to be linearly dependent. So is said to be linearly dependent. So linearly dependent, and I'll underline that, dependent, if, pause here. See if I can find a better marker while you catch up. So a set of functions f sub 1 through f sub n of x is said to be linearly dependent, hmm, linearly dependent if, there we go, that's what I'm talking about. That's a marker. That, look at that. That's it. <laughs> on an interval i, oh, oh, I forgot to say that. On an interval i, on an interval i, I for us is always going to be the real numbers, right? This is a DE class, so we're not going to go nuts with it. Uh, if there exists, so there exists, there exist constants. These are numbers, so constants. We like to call our constants uh, using the letter C, so we'll do lowercase c sub 1 to lowercase c sub n. So c sub 1 to c sub n. Let me pause here. So we're saying a bunch of functions are linearly dependent on some interval i, which is going to be the real numbers. If we can find some numbers, and here's where it gets even more confusing, they're not all zero. That means they can't all be zero. So if you can find some numbers that are not all zero, such that, such that, you have what's called a linear combination of these functions. So what does that mean? Basically, you have c1 times f sub 1 of x plus c2 times f sub 2 of x plus all the way to cn times f sub n of x, and that's equal to 0. So this is called a linear combination of the functions. Whenever you have like a number times a function plus a number times a function plus a number times a function, it's called a linear combination. So if you have this uh, for all x and i, let me pause. It's so hot in here. Isn't it hot in the, in the it's Oh, I know. It's so hot. I know. I wish I had tissue or something. You can, you can, you can, you can get water from you too. No, it's really like, I know. It's really, it makes the math harder. I can hear the other guy over there. I was like, what is he talking about? I was like really interested in what he was saying. Cheer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At the Zimmerman, I'm like, what is he talking about? Like, yeah, I think he's teaching calculus or something. I'm like, oh. So, so we say the functions are dependent if this is true. Okay, if this is true. Um, so let me explain what it means intuitively. This is going to be a big leap. So we're saying the functions are dependent. So that means that they depend on each other. So how? We'll check this out. We're saying they're dependent if we can write this equation where not all of these are zero. So they're not all zero. Pretend that this one is not zero. If this is not zero, you could subtract these guys and you would get C1, I'm going to erase this, but you would get C1 equals some stuff, right? Subtract, 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 you would just get this. But C1 is not 0, so then you could divide by C1. So you would get F sub 1 equals some stuff with the other ones. So F sub 1 can be written in terms of the other ones. So if it's dependent, you can write at least one of them in terms of the other ones. So they depend on each other, right? I never knew that for years, right? I just never really thought about what it meant. But that's what it means, right? Functions are dependent if you can take at least one of them and write it in terms of the other ones. What do you think the opposite of dependent would be, if you had to guess? Independent. Independent. So I'm going to write that down in a full, complete sentence, because this is, this is new. You're not used to doing math like this. You can take calc 1, 2, and 3, and you'll, you'll, you don't do this. This is linear algebra. So if the set, if the set of functions is not linearly dependent, so is, and I'll go to that board in a minute, is not linearly dependent. I know it's a lot of writing, but it's worth it. It's worth it. 
we say they are linearly independent. So we say, we say they are, I felt the cool breeze, maybe it's in my head, they are, <laughs> yeah, I know, it's like linearly independent, I zoned out, independent, I was trying to feel the breeze, independent, <laughs> so hot. Yeah, you don't mind coming up and being, no, I'm kidding, no, I'm kidding, I'm good, no, that's really fun. You don't mind being, you can come up and do it, it's fun. <laughs> huh? Oh, I am so sorry. I was listening to him and I wasn't paying attention to the guy next door. Anyone know what it stands for? Such that. Such that. Good question. Very good question. Such that. Yeah. Such that. Such that. So I'm going to write down a bunch of the stuff that I just said in words. All right, I'm going to write it down now. Uh, because if you take linear algebra, which many of you will, this is beneficial. Except in linear algebra, it's easier. So like in linear algebra, when you, when you do, this is called a linear combination. In linear algebra, you do it with vectors. So like, if I have, just an aside, just before I go further, if you have 2 times x plus 1 plus 3 times x minus 2, that's a linear combination of x plus 1 and x minus 2, right? This is your f1, this is your f2, right? So here we have a linear combination of these. In linear algebra, you do like stuff like this. That's a linear combination of the vectors 1, 2, 0, 1. So you deal with vectors in linear algebra, right? So this is a big leap. Right away, we're starting with functions. So it's like linear algebra on something. I don't want to say it it's being recorded, but you know what I mean. Like, IVP. on what? <laughs> linear algebra on some IVP, right? Like, oh, just to the, to the max, right? So it's like the harder linear algebra right away, day one. All right, so let me write some stuff down that's important. So remarks. Hey, you made it, Nick. Oh, it's so good. I, we were talking. I was like, oh, Nick is here. Isn't he in this class? And yeah, it's good, good. No, it's good. It's okay. I, I saw you. I'm like, oh, I saw him. Like, I figured you were maybe doing something else. So the first remark is what I was saying earlier. So F1 through Fn are dependent. I'm just going to say dependent just to save three seconds of our lives. I could have just said linearly dependent. Are dependent. This is called a biconditional arrow. So whatever is here is the same as whatever is here. So if this is true, then whatever we write here is also true. If this is true, then whatever we write here is true. So we said that it's dependent if you can write one of them in terms of the other one. So they depend on each other. So I'll just say at least one f sub i can be uh, expressed, can be expressed as a linear, I know, it's so much fun. I have to focus though, as, a, as a, I can hear the teacher, as a linear combination, is that why you're laughing? I just relate to him so much, because it's so Of the other, what, what is he saying? He was given a lecture, for sure. He was just laying it out. Whatever he was saying was definite. And the camera won't pick it up, so, okay, it's fun, it's fun. <clears throat> He's my, he was, well, never mind. So there we go. <laughs> so, so, so for example, they're not all zero, so if C1 was not zero, right, we, we talked about it, you could subtract the other ones and solve for F1, right, you could solve for F1. The other remark is this one. Um, so, what's the opposite of not all zero? All zero. All zero. So, this is important for the test, and like for doing a problem. So, you, basically, on the test, we'll have to use this definition, we'll start by writing it down, basically. And if all of the CIs are zero, then it's not dependent. What is it called when it's not dependent? Independent. independent. Yeah, I was covering it up, so it's independent. <laughs> independent. So if they're, if they're all zero, it's independent. All zero, independent. All zero, independent. Okay? If they're not all zero, it's dependent. So not all CI equals zero. This would be the same as saying dependent, dependent. Okay, so that's, I could have just started with this and just like hand waved it all, but I wanted you to have the definition, the correct definition in your notes forever, right? Because many of you will take more courses on this. Yeah, Jamal? So if one of them is zero, then it's dependent? Yes, well, as long as, it, well, so if one of them is zero, and the, if you have all of them are zero and one of them is not, it's dependent. As long as not all of them are zero. If they're all zero, independent. Otherwise, dependent. So even if you can find, it's independent. The constants. 
because you multiply the function by 0, does that make the whole function 0? It does, but that doesn't change the constants, right? I can have 2x equals 4, and I can multiply by 0. So I get 0 equals 0, but that doesn't make 2 equal to 0. 2 is still 2, right? Ah, no, it's deep. It's good. It's good. It's good stuff. No, it's asking. Uh, let me uh, let me show you some pictures so you have some more intuition as to why this works. I made these up. Um, I, I think they're okay though. So here's, I'll just call it idea. So idea, 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 idea. So here's an example. Actually, this is a homework question. E to the x plus three. I think the last question has something like is something like this. At the end of class, we'll go through all of the homework, all of it, all of it, for 4-1. So if you graph these functions, I'll show you what it looks like. So e to the x plus 3 looks like this, and then here's e to the x minus 3. Okay, so this is, this is this one, and this is this one. So it looks like we took e to the x plus 3, and we shifted it over. It's like a translation, right? You see how it's been translated? So in this case, they would be dependent. So graphically, two functions could be dependent in a situation like this. In the homework, you have a question like this. You have e to the x plus 3 equals fill in the blank times e to the x minus 3. And you actually have to fill in the blank. That's all you have to do. And then you have to say dependent or independent. Obviously, you know the answer. Anyone know what number we have to put here? What constant? E to the what? Zero. Nope. Three. Nope. Plus so. Three. No, it would be plus three. It would be x to the third. Nope, almost. Six. Uh, almost, almost, not six. Nine. Oh, no, no, it is six. It is six. Oh, I'm sorry, it's six. It's six. It's six. Sorry, it's, it's a verbal mistake. It doesn't count. Oh, oh, we're doing double points now, if you want, right? No, it doesn't. No, it's got to be. It's got to be written. That's Udash. I don't make the rules, Udash. I just follow them. So, 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 it's got to be written because I say the wrong thing all the time. Oh, you wouldn't even have to take the test. If that was the case, you would get an A just for coming to class. So, so, so. <laughs> I say bad stuff all the time. So, six plus you add, right? You add the exponents, right? So, so. Oh, so what does this mean? Look, this function is a number times this function. So this function is a multiple of this function. That's how you say it. So two functions are dependent when they are multiples of each other. Okay, let me write that down. Why not? Let me not be lazy. Two functions, it's worth it. It's worth it. It might help you someday. I had to prove this when I took linear algebra. I remember struggling. Uh, two functions are dependent. I'll just say dependent. If they are multiples of each other. So if they are multiples multiples of each other. They say linear algebra is really important. I met this guy once, his name was Michael in grad school, and he said that linear algebra was the most important math in the world. That's it, that's all he said. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, but he, but he was really smart, right? So like when he said it, I was like, oh. He had been there like five years, you know? Like, he was like a veteran student. He didn't even take classes anymore. Just, oh, I just talked to professors. And <laughs> He took all the classes they had, right? He was just finishing up his thesis. But he said that it's more important than calculus, right? It comes up more than calculus. At some schools, you have to take linear algebra before you take this class. Mm -hmm. At UCF, it's this one, right? MAS 3105, except you do mostly stuff with vectors. You don't, you don't do stuff this advanced. And then 3106, that's the one where you do proofs. But 3105, it's four credits at UCF. Is it harder than differential equations? Depends on the teacher. I took, I did really well, I'll brag. I got 100 on all the tests, and I failed the final. <laughs> I did, yeah, I did. I remember I was sitting on the floor, the teacher comes out, how are you doing? I said, I failed the final, and he goes, ha, 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 and he walked away. Like, was, that's all I remember. I was like, oh. I was like, I lost my A, I got an A, though. Um, so yeah, 3105, it's all vectors and stuff. It's pretty easy if you get a decent teacher. It's not bad. Here's another example. Here's another example. 3106 is the one that's proof-based. That's the one that I would not recommend taking unless you're a math major, right? That one will consume your life. <laughs> no, it will. It will. <laughs> it's like comparable to like a hard engineering class, right? It's like really, it's upper level. Yeah, you don't want to do that to yourself. <laughs> unless you have to. So here's e to the x. That's this one. And then here's e to the 2x. That's this one. So, so they're just, it doesn't matter which one's which, but that's e to the x, that's e to the 2x. So based on the picture, 
like comparing it to the previous one. What do you think? Dependent or independent? Independent, independent. yeah, totally, right? Because you, you don't have that translational feature, right? So independent. I like these examples. Rotational. Is it rotational? Is that the right word? No. I'm, no. Oh. I just, if you rotate it, it kind of looks like you're... <laughs> yeah, if you rotate it, <laughs> yeah. You know, you can study that in math. You can study rotations. Yeah, you can look at the set of all, like, symmetries. There's rotations, translations, and then some other ones. It's like a whole field of math. Yeah, what is it? Tessellation. Oh, no, I don't know that one, no. It's the same form that fits inside of itself. Oh, wow. So you can also drag something across a graph and see the tessellation. Cool, cool. Yeah, that's used in chemistry and stuff. Is that all? Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff out there in the world. Oh, because it would have to be the polymers. Oh. Because they fit together with it, right? I, I don't know. I don't know chemistry. Uh -huh. H2O is water. Okay. Um, and, and by the way, <laughs> so sorry. No, I, I really don't. Um, there's no number you can put here, right? Like before we were putting a number here, the only thing you can put here is e to the x, but that's not a number, right? It's got to be a number. So they're not multiples of each other, right? They're not multiples of each other, right? It's deep, right? It's deep. One more intuitive example, just one more. Hmm? No, nothing will work. Because how do you get from e to the 2x to e to the x? You have to multiply it by e to the x. But you need, to, you need a number there for this to be true, right? Like over here, we had the number, right? e to the 6. By number, you're referring to like the 6 compared to the x. Right. The, the e to the 6 compared to the x. Here's one more. Wait, is that because e is a constant, so e raised to a constant oh. is still a constant? Yes. Yes. E so because that has a variable, we can't use it. Right. It makes it a function. Yeah. Right. Yep. Totally. 100%. Yep. So what was it in So graphically, because it, it wasn't like a shift. You know how the other one has that shift? And mathematically, you can't put a number here to make it true. The only thing you can put here to make this true is e to the x. That's a variable. Right? Because x plus x is 2x, but that's, that's, not a, that's not a constant. No, it's good. It's good to ask. It's good. I'm not going to test you on this, but, you know, it's, we're, we're supposed to learn. Mm -hmm. oh. that's, yeah. All right. Here's the other, another example. Last one. I also made this one up. So last pick or another pick, and then we'll do some problems. We, we're, I'm gonna do every single example in my notes today, because um, again, this is new, right? This is not something that you're not used to doing this. So you have two, three functions: y sub one of x, y sub one equals x. Sorry, y sub two is x plus one, and y sub three is uh, x plus two. X plus two. So if you graph these, these are all, I made it up, so I made it easy. So that's x, that's x plus 1, that's x plus 2. <laughs> so it's like, so it's all like, all translations. I mean, it's supposed to, they're supposed to be parallel. What, what, uh, what do you think they are? Dependent or? Yeah, dependent. Mm -hmm. They're dependent. They depend on each other. You might say, how? I'll show you. I, I worked backwards and I figured it out. It turns out that x is equal to 2 times x plus 1. I worked this out beforehand, before class, many years ago. These are the same notes I used when I first taught the class, because I'm lazy. <laughs> so yeah, all my notes are originals, like from the first time I ever taught the class. So that's true. What is the derivative Like, because you could say that the derivative of all of those. It's 1. Yeah. It's pretty deep. So then they would all have the same rate of change. And I mean, that's the point of a colon, right? In an infinity series, you try and match all the derivatives to get it to match, and if they match, then they would be dependent. Mm -hmm. Maybe. 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 Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you have x's here, if they all have, if they're all linear, they're going to be dependent. Yeah. That's true. And if they're all quadratic, I think they'll also all be, well, as long as it's just an x squared term. Yeah, yeah I think. It depends on the question. More research. More research. That's good. Good questions. Good. We'll look at some cool examples in a minute, but check this out. So this does, this does work, right? Look, 2x uh, minus x is x. 2 minus 2 is 0, so it does check. So this one depends on the other ones, so they're dependent. Yeah? What if it was just x and then x plus 1? Then, see, th then in that case, I don't think it would be, uh, those would be independent, I think, actually, right? Isn't it just a translation? Yeah, but it wouldn't work, right? That's a really good question. Check it out. Ah, oh, see? So, this, so it fails. Good. Good. Wow, you're all so smart. Check it out. So say it was, <laughs> so say, say it was this. So if it's dependent, according to, according to this, they're multiples of each other. There's other ways to do it. We can use the definition, but we'll, we'll, we'll burn that bridge later. So 
so that means that you would have to have x equals c times x plus 1, right? And I don't think, I don't think you can do that, right? Like, how would you solve this? Um, I guess you could subtract this. You Wait, would get, uh -huh. to say that um, uh, pulling out t in front of a consistent set of terms is impossible. Is a possible situation for where we would be dependent. No, and like, yeah, yeah, could be. So in this case here. Why couldn't see the t? Hmm? Why couldn't see the t alpha? No, we're doing the t alpha. Yeah, that's the, the, the homogeneous ones. Yeah. yeah, that could be the case too. Yeah. But check this out. I think this can't happen. Um, I, think, I think you can't do this. Because if you try to do this, you would get x minus c x plus 1 equals 0. So you would get x minus c x minus c equals 0. Um, so then you would get, I guess you could pull out this x. Yeah, I don't think this can happen. I, I don't think you can do this. I, I, don't think, I don't think it'll work. Because if you try to solve this equation, I mean, can you think of a C that'll make this work? X equal to X plus 1. What number, would, what number could you put here? <laughs> 1? If you put 1 here, you just get, huh? X equal to X plus 1. It doesn't make any sense. Right, it doesn't make any sense. If you, if you try to solve this, you set this equal to like um, 0X plus 0, is what we're doing later, you would end up setting 1 minus C equal to 0, and then you end up eating negative C equal to 0. So C is equal to 0, but if C is 0, you get 1 minus 0 equal to 0. So you get 1 equals 0, and it's a contradiction, so it doesn't work. So I went, that really, went through that really quickly, but that basically justifies that this can't happen. So good, Jamal. So no. So, so not always does that translation lead to dependence. Mm -hmm. Deep, right? So, but with three it works, right? And with my rigged example over here, this, this example that I prepared with the E's, uh, it, it, does, it does work as well. But these are rigged examples, so no, not, not as easy. So, interesting, right? Doesn't, doesn't quite work. Everyone see why that can't happen? All right, let's do some problems and we're with, with three functions. And I'm gonna do every single example in my notes um, just for, for uh, practice, so you get practice. And the question will say, is it dependent or independent on th the whole set of real numbers? So, so hey, oh, you were already here. So, so linearly, <laughs> independent or dependent on negative infinity. Everyone okay with this? I went through that kind of quick. Did everyone see what I did here? I combined the x terms, and then in order for these to be true, 1 minus c has to be equal to 0, and negative c must be equal to, because I'm using matching, you see? 1 minus c must be equal to 0. Negative c must be equal to 0. So I did that, but then when you do this, you get c equals 0. And if you plug 0 in here, you get 1 minus 0 equals 0. So 1 equals 0, which is impossible. What's the symbol mean? It means contradiction. I stole it from someone. I saw them do it, and I'm like, I'm doing it. So it's this. Yeah, I have chickens, and I, yeah, and, yeah, 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 I have a chicken graveyard, it doesn't matter. Okay, A. I know, I have three chickens buried in the backyard. Okay, so F sub 1 of X, I know it's really bad, I just, yeah, it's nature, right? Nature is really cool. Yeah, I know, I just had one die. <laughs> Did I tell you? Yeah, I died in the day. Like, yeah, something killed it. Yeah, because the head was gone and it was just dead. And it, was, it was really bad, I know. I know. Mm hmm? So a raccoon in the middle of the day killed your chicken? Yeah, it was, the sun was out, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still have one left. So. Huh? No, because the one that's left is a bully. So, okay, so solution. And she killed one of the other ones. So, so yeah, yeah. It's really dark, I'm telling you. Animals are brutal. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so when you start these problems, oh, by the way, by the way, is this, this is a tough question. Is it dependent or independent? I don't. Dependent. It's dependent. Can you explain why? Why? Uh, put times F1 by 7 and then you times F2 by 6. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, right, yeah. So look, F3 is 7 times the first one minus 6 times the second one. You see that? Super clever, yeah, I mean, it's not something you're expected to see, like, the fact that someone saw it is like a miracle. No, it's good, it's good. So, yeah, no, it's like automatic A. No, no, it's on camera, no. So seven times the first one minus six times the second one, right? In this situation, would you say that 
you say that F2 is dependent on F1 <coughs> in the sense that it's squared, and then F3 is dependent? It doesn't work that way. Mm -mm. Right? No, they're all dependent on each other. In particular, F3 depends on these two. How does F1 depend on the rest of them? Right. So they don't have to depend Particularly it, individual. Like between one and two, they don't depend on each other. Right. These aren't these aren't dependent together, but well, together. They aren't all dependent to three. Right. Yeah, okay. Okay. At least one of them has to depend on the other ones. Well, why is an F two on all of them? On F1? Uh, yeah. Huh? Why is an F? Oh. Thank you. Let's go. Yes. Okay. Good. No, ask. It's good. This is a tough concept, right? And it's a big deal. All right, so let's start the problem. Yeah, work it out. Let's work it out. Let's work it out. All right. So you start by saying suppose or let or assume. I'm going to say suppose. I'm going to abbreviate suppose, though. Suppose, Matt, do you know how to spell suppose? Yes. It doesn't matter. You know how to spell it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, let me just, I mean, just in case, right? Because, like, maybe, like, oh, I never learned how to spell it in school. Well, suppose that. <laughs> suppose you never did. <laughs> So now you have to write down a linear combination. So it's just C1 times this, C2 times this, C. so just write that down. So C1 times x plus C2 times, times x squared plus C3 times uh, 7x minus 6x squared. And then you're supposed to say this is equal to 0. But this is true for some constants. C1, C2, C3. Now, these are real numbers, right? So let's be a little more pro in this class. <laughs> Why not? It's our one opportunity to do it. So do you all know the symbol, what this means? Have you seen that? Yeah, all real numbers. Do you know what this means? Belongs. Who said that? Oh, Luigi. Yes. Oh, yes. Belongs. Is a member of. Is in. Is, is an element in. So you can just say these belong to the set of real numbers, right? So you don't have to put that on the test, but I, I figured I'd throw it in there just for some extra rigor. And this has to be true for all X and R. So anyone know what the symbol is for, for all in mathematics? It's upside down A. This means for all. For all. I know. There's a four in there? No, maybe. Oh, I don't know. There's no. See the four? What four? No, I mean, you could have left those there. Oh, that little thing that was just a smudge. So, and for all, for all X, it's beautiful in R. So beautiful. This, this means there exists. The backwards E. There exists. And why is everything upside down and backwards? Because it's math, right? So. <laughs> all right. Yeah. <laughs> My theory is that math is really hard, and you get really, you know, when you're trying to prove things, you get really tired, and so you make up symbols to make it easier. So that's where this is from. Okay, so you always start this way, okay? So always with these steps. Then. So I'm going to put then. I feel like there's a breeze in here now. So the only thing you can do now is distribute the C3. So let's go ahead and do that. So C1x plus C2x squared plus 7C3x, right? 7C3x, this is beautiful, minus 6C3x squared, right? 6C3x squared. And this is equal to 0. You don't have to keep saying this with the Cs and stuff. It's, it's good enough. It's almost like a proof. If you were proving independence, this would be a proof. Or it's almost like a proof. Like we're almost, we're just so close. Like we, we could do some rewording and make it a proof, and it would be like an airtight, 100% solid mathematical proof. But we don't need to, right? This is DE. But I, I'd like you to like show your work in a proof-like way, and it'll say to use the definition. So if you know another way of doing it, please don't do it that way. Use 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 this. At this point, we are going to combine everything. So. Let's go ahead and group together the terms. So the x terms would be this one and this one. So you pull out the constants and put them in the front like this. C1 plus 7C3x. See, C1 plus 7C3x. Plus. And then you can pull out the constants for the x squared term. So that would be C2 minus 63, and then what goes here? X squared. Okay, good. You're still with me. And I also I zoned out. Thank you. Okay, and that's equal to zero. <laughs> I was thinking about something else. Okay. Okay. 
Any questions up to here? I'm gonna just pause. I'm trying to go slow with this stuff because this is new. Like this is not you know, something you've seen. So yeah. I missed it. What does backwards E mean? Oh, very good. So the backwards E is an ancient symbol that means there exists. Yeah. If you're wondering where you learned this, it's uh, yeah. Why do we need to know that? You, you don't. <laughs> you don't. But it's good. Because I was talking about this one. So. Okay. But now you know it, right? I'll no, you won't. You'll never forget that. That's like creepy, right? That's like something, that's the stuff of nightmares. <laughs> yeah. It's like, ah! Exactly. Yeah, the for alls and the e's coming at you in your dreams. Yeah, no. This thing is pretty scary. Yeah. Any, any CS majors in here? Computer science majors? Nobody? Computer engineering. Computer engineering. Okay. Yeah. If you do computer science, when you take discrete math, you learn it there. If you're a math major, you learn it when you take the math, the proof class you take. That's when you see it. All right, so, so here's, the, here's the next step. The next step is a bit of a leap. But any questions up to here? Any other questions? Okay. So this is equal to zero, and this is true for all x. I'm going to write something down, then I'm going to erase it. This is the same thing as zero x plus zero x squared. And this is true for all x. So the only way it's going to happen is if this whole thing here is equal to zero, and if this whole thing here is equal to zero, right? Because you have to use matching, right? This zero is equal to this. And this zero is equal to this, right? So it's like if you had if you had ax squared plus bx equals 2x squared plus 3x, then a would be equal to 2 and b would be equal to 3, just using matching. It's the same thing, right? So when you get to this step, what you do is, is you just set each of the coefficients equal to 0. Okay, so I'll do it up here. So c1 plus 7c3 equals 0, and then c2 minus um, 6 C3 yep. equals zero. Thanks. I was looking at that to make sure the mic was. This morning when I recorded this, the mic wasn't connected. So I threw it away. Sad. We recall if they're all zero, it's independent. You might say, oh, can't you just plug in zero? No. The definition says if you can find numbers that are not all zero, it's independent. So if you can find numbers that are not all zero, sorry, it's dependent. Dependent. I misspoke. So I said the wrong thing. That would have been points. So I think we can solve this for C1. I'm going to say why. Because now there's a C3 here, and we can do the same thing here. And there's a C3 here. So we've solved both in terms of C3. And I think now we can plug in numbers. You don't, you don't want to plug in zero, right? Because the thing says, the definition says, if you can find numbers that are not all zero, it's dependent. So what's the easiest number in the world besides zero that you can plug in for C3? One. One. So just, just pick C3. Pick any number. Don't pick zero, right? Don't pick zero. When, when is it going to be zero? When you have no choice. Like, if you have no choice and they're all zero, it's independent. But if you can find numbers that aren't zero, go for it, right? So that would mean that C1 would be negative seven. Right, C1 would be negative 7. I'm going to circle it. Like, yeah, it feels good. Or box it, but I didn't box it. Uh, and then C2 would be 6. So we found constants that are not all 0. So just to make sure you got it, what would the answer be? Dependent or independent? Dependent. Dependent. Because they're not all zeros. Yeah. Because the definition says, if you can find numbers that are not all zero, then it's independent. Then, then it's dependent. <sighs> so if, if we were to plug in any number. Any number. And they're all zero, that means it's independent? Yes. Yeah, so what number we plug in? Independent, you know what's going to happen? You will not have the opportunity to plug in numbers. Like, you won't even get to the step. Like, they'll just all be zero. You'll see. It's like forced upon you. Yeah, like you have no choice. If we get this far, it's pretty much dependent. Yes. Yes. So if you, if you get to the point where you can plug in numbers, it's going to be dependent. Yeah. So when you have no choice, when, when it's like forced upon you, it's like they're all zero and you, can, and you have no say in it, it's going to be independent. We're going to do more examples. We're going to do every example in my notes. Um, just because, again, this is new. Let's do, let me skip that one. That's weird. I know. Let's do this one. There's no erasers. Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah. Erasers. So when you get to zero, that's because you're describing connections that don't exist and thus they're nothing. They're zero. Say that again. Okay, so the constants are the connections between all of the equations. Yes, um, yes. So when you plug in zero, you're essentially saying there is no connection. There's no right, right. Right, right. 
Right, so if you plug in zero, then like you're not really satisfying, you're not really showing dependence, because to show dependence, you have to show there exists these constants. Right, that's, okay. So we showed some existence, so. Here's another one, B. So how about this one? F sub one of this, well, after, we see, after you see this one, it'll make a little more sense. So let's see, so F sub two of X equals X, F sub three of X, equals x squared. This is a good example. This one's a little bit better. It's nice that we have three days in a test. It's really nice. Some semesters it's been like, for some reason, it's like two days in a test. It's really nice. Well, it's a little more relaxed this time, I think. Okay, so solution. So we'll start the same way, right? Do you remember what word we used at the beginning? Suppose. Suppose. You can also use assume or let, but I like suppose. I'm gonna go back to my way. Suppose that we have c1 times 7 plus x plus c2 times x plus c3 times x squared. That's equal to 0 for some c1, c2, c3, c1, c2, c3 in the set of real numbers. Right, this means these numbers are elements in the set of real numbers. Elements are, th are things in a set. Um, so these are the elements in the set of real numbers. This means belongs to, is in, is a member of. And what was the symbol for all? Do you remember the upside down? Yeah, the upside down A and for all X in R. Now you take a whole class where you learn this stuff, where you learn logic, you learn the symbols, you learn how to write proofs. When you study math, that's what you do. It's, and you end up taking, and all your classes, all your classes start with this stuff. Every single class you take starts with a review of the notation and sets. So by the time you get a math degree, if you know anything, you know this. Mm -hmm. Because you do it in every single class. <laughs> so the first day of class, and most of your classes feels great, and then the second day does not. So then, <laughs> so then, I guess we just distribute, right? So let's do that. So 7C1 plus C1X plus C2X. I love this. This is math plus C3X squared. By the way, if you're wondering what this has to do with differential equations, uh, it turns out that when we have an equation, say of order three, and, we ha and it's linear, and we have three linearly independent solutions, if you take a linear combination of those solutions, you have the general solution. If you have an order two differential equation, and you have two linearly independent solutions, the general solution is a linear combination of those. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that later today. So it's, that's, it's a big section. What do we do next? We group them up. Yeah, group them up, group them up, so let's do it. So I think this one's by itself, right? So, and then this one, these are, to, uh, oh, these are together. C1 plus C2. And then this one is by itself. And this is equal to zero, right, equal to zero. I like this, it's very different, right? No, no, the days of Bernoulli are gone, right? It's, it's, it's like a fresh start. And then you set all the coefficients equal to zero, right? So seven C1 is zero, C1 plus C2 is equal to zero, C3 is equal to zero. Beautiful. This means that C1 is equal to zero, right? Because you can divide by seven. So C1 is equal to, I'm gonna put that in a box because that's an accomplishment. Oh, look what happens here when you put it here. You get zero, because you get zero plus C2 equals zero. And C3 is equal to zero. So they're all zero and we had no choice. So what would the answer be? Independent. Independent. You see how there's no choice? It just happens. It just happens. It's like forced upon us. It's forced. That's the word you use in mathematics uh, when it's fun to use that in math proofs. Whenever you can use that in a math proof, it's like, it's like this forces x to be equal to zero. It makes you feel like a champion. You get to use the word forces in a math problem. I mean, how often does that happen? Any questions on this one? Anyone like this stuff besides me? Anyone? Yeah, I, I think this is awesome. This is like, this is pure math. This is pure mathematics. We'll be doing you know, different stuff later. When we're solving the DEs, basically we're solving applied math problems in a sense. And the third test is all like weird electrical engineering type math, which is applied stuff. But 
we get a taste of, of this, which is kind of nice. I mean, it's the DE class when we're doing this. I mean, what, what? How lucky are we? Like, oh, <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Too lucky. Too lucky. C. C. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. I would let you try it, but I'm, I'm worried it's a bit too hard. Do you want to try one or no? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. All right, my other class was not able to do this one. Don't tell them, Jamal, because you know the people. <laughs> so they all got stuck. I think the whole, everyone got stuck, I think. There's something that's really tricky. Take your time, try to do it. Same thing, right? Same steps. Ah, oh, I'm zoning out. Okay, here we go. <laughs> But I, but you don't know it's wrong. You didn't call it out, Nicholas. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <Good. sighs> oh, I hope that thing keeps recording. So, so suppose that. Yeah, solution. And suppose that the same way, mimic it. Just try to copy it. Take your time. Take your time. You'll probably get stuck. There's there's something that happens. I, it's it's a little bit tricky. When I gave it to my morning class, I'm like, oh, they'll be able to figure it out. I'm gonna do, hey, wake up, I'm gonna do. Wake up, you all right? Oh. Did you get, did you get, did you sleep, Momo do? How many hours did you sleep? Three. Oh, I'm sorry. Go, go back to bed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Do you know, I'm, never mind. Do you know how many I slept? Ten. That's, that's more than required. That's good. I know. I'm one of those. I went to bed at nine. I was watching Under Arrest on Netflix. Where it's not good for you anymore. Extra credit sleep. Twelve. Like, there is a. You can't sleep too much. Yeah, and your body actually. Does. I was really tired this morning when I woke up at seven. I can sleep all day. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, Nick. We're the same. It's good. <laughs> well, I think it also depends on what sleep cycle you wake up in. I was having dreams about about this. I was having nightmares that I was late. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's always a reoccurring dream. I had to like jump in a river and cross the river and then climb up a ramp. Yeah, I know. And there was like a wow. Buddha statue. I don't even, I'm not even religious. I'm like, it was just really. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, it's, it was just, just some weird. Mm -hmm. And there was like a log there where like a previous traveler had tried to go that way. Yeah, it's like, like a journey in my dream. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a quest. <laughs> so I slept for 10 hours. <laughs> I did that. I've done that before. I had such a good dream. I was like, oh, I want to go back. I want to see. Or like I win the lottery. I'm like, oh, I want to go back. <laughs> is there a term for that? I think, there's a term I think there is. You can do math for dreams. I had a student. He, did, uh, he took chaos theory, I think. Or no, I think it was chaos theory at UCF. It was an honors class. And he, his project was he modeled sleep REM cycles using differential equations. Jesus. Mm -hmm. No, it was chaos theory. It's chaos theory. I think that's what it was. Chaos theory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he got his master's, and now he was, he's works in an investment bank now, so he doesn't makes the big bucks. Anyone get it? No, that's okay. Mom. Yeah, take your time. You probably get stuck. I'll, I'll work on it in a minute. Still working. Wow, it's been recording for an hour. I'm surprised. You can still do C one plus C two plus C three. Yeah, I think you have to do that in this one. I think that happens in this one, Matthew, yeah. Did you get stuck, Renee? No, I just got something that... Yeah, I know, it's really tough. I know. I have to look up right now, and I already answered the question on this. Yeah. It's not the same thing. Oh, it's not? Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the homework is really easy. It's like two choices. It's dependent. It is dependent. I think it is dependent. So is this right? Let me see. It? No, you made a mistake, and that, I figured you would make that mistake. Okay. It's my fault, because I haven't really gone over that yet. Like, that's why I was, like, hesitant, because of that. You have to set the whole constant term equal to zero. The whole constant term. Let me do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. So, solution. So, you start by saying, suppose that you have C1. Whoa, fail, fail. Okay, C1 times X. I got too excited. Plus C2 times x minus 1 plus c3 times x plus 9 
and that's equal to zero. <coughs> and this is for some C1, C2, C3. And for all x in R. Okay. Who made it that far? Just curious. Okay, good, 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 good. I mean, you get points for that. Like, I mean, not, something, right? Every, one semester someone wrote, suppose that, and they quit. <laughs> they just, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then they did good on the rest of the test, too. Like, it's so, so, <laughs> they just forgot that because it was so long, right? They had reviewed all, I mean, you get, once you start working on like 4.4, .4, your life is consumed and like you forget about all this. And so, <laughs> hmm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't write that, so C one x distribute here C two x minus C two C three x plus nine C three. Yeah, did I mess up or something? Uh, no. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. I was just gonna ask uh huh. If you can plug in a number that just means oh. you could. Yeah. Oh, okay. General, if you can find numbers for the C's that aren't all zero, you got it. Yeah, Momo, did you had a question? Suppose that. I don't want to answer that question. <laughs> if I say one, then I might forget. I'm weak. You gotta say 20. Too. I gotta say 20. The whole thing is burn the test. No, no, I'm kidding. No, no, no. I don't know. Huh? So if you can solve for C1 in terms of the other ones and like C2 in terms of the other ones. It should be dependent. Yeah, it should be. So can we group anything here? The X's? Yeah, the X's and the And the constants. Very good. Come all. I know. I almost called you something else. So 9C3 minus C2. See how I did that? See how I rewrote these? I did it just to help myself to make it look better. See? It's 9C3 minus C2. So now you set this equal to zero. And here's the thing. You set this whole thing equal to zero. That's what I was talking about, Rafa. Yeah, I know. That's the part that I was like, oh, I didn't go over that. So see, the whole constant. Why didn't we do that? This one? We did, but the, the, the constant was just this. It was one term. Here the constant is a sum. You set C3 root C2. So you do, so you do. So now you set this equal to zero. Watch, I'll show you. And this whole thing equal to zero. Because I got there, but then I moved C2 over and divided by 9. Oh, just do the, go, okay, good, good. Uh, you made it this far? Yeah, I divided by 9. I set both of them equal to uh, C2. Yeah. Let's do that, Eric. Jeff. Jeff, let's do that, Jeff. Yeah. So I think this. I was in my morning class. I did this one, and I almost did something. I, I almost solved for C three, but I didn't because someone said what Jeff, 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 what Jeff said. So do this, and now just make C three one, because that makes it easy. Because if C three is one, what's C two? Nine. So what's the best route to take? I don't know. Just the easy route, right? And now, now you know C one plus nine. Plus 1 is 0, so C1 plus 10 is 0, so C1 is negative 10. So what's the answer? Dependent or independent? Dependent. De de dependent. Yeah, dependent. Because By the way, that's a good, that's, I'm glad you said that. So what if, like what Nick said, what if you do this and then you say the wrong answer? You do get a lot of partial credit. I feel bad if that happens. Like you do everything right and you put independent. I was like, oh, come on. Like, you know. So, yeah. Is there like specific constants that you would get? Or it doesn't matter so long as you pick one. Because like I did it too, but I did it a different way. I have different constants. Should you should have the same exact constants. It's still dependent. You should have the same exact constants. Otherwise, it's wrong probably. Well, I have C1 being one instead of C2. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. You just pick different numbers. Yes. I mean, you should have the same combinations. Yeah, I have that. Oh, that's good. You can make up numbers. Yeah. I'm just a little lost with that part. How you got the C3 is equal to one. So two. Oh, we made it up. So once you get here. Mumudu, you just think, what's a really easy number? One. So just to clarify real quick, you didn't combine both of the terms in this one because one of them had a variable. I didn't say that again. I didn't. Just to verify. Say it again. Yes. So uh, this time you didn't combine the remaining terms because they have different variables. This one didn't have one, and the other one had this. Right. This one just had a single term. Got it. Yeah. Can you have more than one set of constants that would have them? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I could have done C, C3 equals 20. Okay. That would work as well. Mm -hmm. Infinitely many. Yeah, there's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
And the only time it's going to be independent is when you don't have a choice and they're all so just like a really zero. Bad constant. So like a really long don't, don't do that. Don't, don't. Why would you do that? <laughs> Come on. I have to read your test. Okay. <laughs> so let's do another one. <laughs> so, one more, one more. <clears throat> one more, yeah. And you always start with C3. Well, in that case. In that case. Yeah, I mean, just whatever, you, you can do whatever you like. I mean, you could have you could have picked the number for C2. You could have said C2 equals 1, right? And then solve for C3. That would have worked as well. Uh, I think I should help you with this one, because this one's really hard. So D. F sub 1 of x equals, equals 3. F sub 2 of x equals cosine squared x. F sub 3 of x equals sine squared x. Equals sine squared x. This one's a little bit different. You can think of this one like just by the trig function, right? Because cosine 2x plus sine 2x equals 1. And so if you multiply them by 3, they would. So good. So it's dependent. Yep. So cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. Multiply it by 3 and you get 3, so they're dependent. Hardcore. But let's, let's work through it and pretend we didn't know that. But she's so good. So good. Extra credit. Extra, no, she doesn't need it. Solution. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see who gets the top score on the next test. Ooh, like, I don't know. It's always fun to see, like, yeah. It's always fun when it switches to different people. I mean, Sarani, you should do good again, but, like, you know. <laughs> so, so suppose that. What's the lowest score? Huh? Like a handshake for the lowest? The lowest? Yeah. Ah, no. That one's a two video. That'd be really bad. Like, oh, like give the lowest score something? $2. No, no, no. <laughs> you're already giving so, so, so C1 times 3, I, that's just a weird, I don't know. I, that's, I have to think about it. That, I've never thought about that. That's kind of deep. Like, what do you, I know, you need something like, what do you do? Right? Like, what do you do if you have the lowest grade in the class? Like, an anchor, maybe? <laughs> an anchor. Yeah, a gift card. No, like. <laughs> oh, 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 I messed up. So, so for, what do you have to say now? C2, C3, in. And what's the last thing you say? So for all X and R. Good. Good, good. Get a tattoo of it. I know. I always just think like, oh, you can't use a formula sheet, but you know, if you tattoo it on your body, it's part of your body, so no one can be like, oh, it's, it's part of my body. Quadratic formula's on my arm. Like, <laughs> what do you do then, right? The real reason you don't let high schoolers get tattoos, just they can't let you know, paint themselves with the they want to see. So, we, we, uh, we have to pick the C's. So, I, I like what Emily was saying. So, we would like these to go away. So what, what can we pick for C2 to make it go away, to make it? Zero. No. One. <laughs> One. Well, zero makes it go away too, but <laughs> you want to have the trig functions left, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's okay. It's good. So, so pick or let or put, I don't, I don't like that word, but allow, allow. Allow. Oh, wow. 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 That's, that's deep. C2 equals 1. C3 equals 1. So let's see what happens then. So then you would get, and this is just one example. You could have put 3 here and 3 here and factored out a 3. I'm doing it this way so that hopefully you understand it better. So 3C1 plus cosine squared plus sine squared equals 0. So I just, I just picked the C2 and the C3 equals 1 just to, just to use the identity, you see? I think this is the best way to explain it, maybe. Oh, we're, we're doing something really cool after this. And then what's, what's cosine squared plus sine squared? What's that going to be? One. one. Yes, this is 3C1 plus 1 equals 0. So that means that 3C1 is negative 1. Yeah, thanks. So C1 is negative 1 third. Yeah, so that's it. So we have all the C's. Oh, I guess we still have to write the answers. So what's the answer? Dependent. Yeah, dependent. So I forgot. Sorry. Go ahead. So you said if they're all zeros, they're independent. Right. All the same. So if they were all ones, that's still dependent. Mm -hmm. um, is there a step right before you wrote the... Right 
Like right before. Before this? Yeah. No. So yeah, before this you look at it and you say, okay, how do I get just this? I make them both ones. That's the logic. I know it's tough. Yeah. So if you're really bad with trick identities, you just kind of screw on yourself? <laughs> no, because I'm not going to be mean. I'm going to give you the same trick identities. You wrote the negative behind the sign squared. I think that should be it. That's a times. That's a times. That's a no, it's a times. No, I, I can dispute that. This is times. I wrote it as a negative. Did you? No, oh, that's a point. <laughs> <laughs> so could you reiterate how um, it's dependent but if you're not all the same like answer? Dependent just means C one is negative one third and another is one. But they're not all zero, so it's dependent. Was it the last one? No, they're not all no they're it's also dependent. If they're not all zero, it's dependent. If they're all zero, it's independent. You wanna do one more? I've been I've been writing it wrong. Oh. You wanna do one more or no? No? I have to make one up, so. Then no. Then no? Okay. Continued. So continued. Continued. So we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, so definition. Definition. Feels good in here to have air conditioning. It's almost like just very different. So definition. So we're going to define something called the Ronskian. Hey! <laughs> the Ronskian. So Ronsky. Un. Spelled like this. Anyone know where that name is from? Like what country it's from? Poland. Wow. I was expecting everyone to say Russian because, like, Ronsky, like, what you know. Right? You're right. It's Polish. I always thought it was Russian for some reason. Um, but yeah, it's Polish. So the Ronsky and. Wow, Kyle, extra credit. No, kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, don't, you, won't, you won't need it. Uh, so, uh, well, you won't. Of f sub 1 to f sub n. So, given a bunch of functions, okay, we're going to compute what's called the Ronskian of, of those functions. So, is. So, is. This is something that we're going to use in the homework. It's a tool that we're going to use. So, I'm going to call it w, and it's equal to the determinant. And I'm going to show you how to uh, write it correctly just for fun of the following. So in the first row, you have just the functions. So we have f sub 1, f sub 2. And then we have to indicate that there are some things missing. Hey, you got a haircut, Tony? Hey, oh, it looks good. It's good. No, it's good. It's good. Um, so then you have some dots here, dot, dot, dot. No, it looks, looks, looks smarter. And then here you have fn. <laughs> These dots, anyone know what they're called? They have a name. Ellipses. Ellipses. Yeah, ellipses. Um, so you have three dots to indicate that stuff is missing. Then in the second row, you take the first derivative. So you have f1 prime, f2 prime, dot, 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 f sub n prime. I'm going to write it out completely correct so you can like, see how to write down an n by n matrix. It's kind of cool. And then we have to have uh, some missing pieces here. So we have more ellipses. So we have dot, 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 and then it'll be f1. And now we're down to the n minus 1th derivative. So, whoa, I lost a point there one semester, and I put an n. Whoops. Uh, yeah, it's n minus 1th. Mm -hmm. My notes are all messed up because of that. And then here we have dot, 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 f sub 2, n minus 1th derivative. And then dot, 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 f sub n, n minus 1th derivative. Then we have dot, dot, dot. And then just to make it even more perfect and professional, we have to have dots here. All right. So if you really want to write it out the way you're supposed to write it out, that's how you write it. So if you look in a linear algebra book, you see stuff like this all over the book. It's like, oh, uh, that's how I know how to write it because I've taken those classes and I've been forced to have to do it in like homework assignments like seven times. You know, it's a million dots. Okay, so it's just the determinant of, of, this, of these functions and of this, this matrix, right? So you have the functions, the derivative, the second derivative, all the way, all the way down. What is it for? We're going to use it as a tool. So a couple, couple remarks about the Ronskian, and then we'll do some examples. So remarks. The first remark, so one, is if you take the Ronskian of a bunch of functions and it's not zero, then those functions will be linearly independent. So I'm going to write that down. So if the Ronskian, so w, and in order to indicate that we have several functions, I'm going to put a parenthesis here and then put the functions here like this. I'm just making up some notation. I didn't do that here because I was lazy, right? Uh, but I'm doing it here just to make up some notation. In my notes, it looks like this over here. I was just saving 
20 seconds, which I just wasted explaining it. So, so if this is not equal to zero for all x in i, so in some interval, then the functions are what's called linearly independent on i. So then f1 through f sub n are linearly independent. So linearly independent, independent on i, on i. So if the Ronskian is not zero, the functions are linearly independent, right? So non-zero Ronskian independent. So not zero independent. Um, that's the first remark. The second remark is that if you're reading the book, is anyone reading the book? Is anyone? No, no. <laughs> You're a little, it's an okay book. All the DE books are just okay. Um, the book, the second remark is the book, it's a funny word, isn't it? Book. The book is different. That's the second remark. <laughs> so the book is different. So if you're reading the book, the book says that if they're independent, the Ronskian's not zero. That's not true. It's only if, if this is not zero, they're independent. So is the book wrong? No. The book has an extra assumption on these functions. The book assumes that these functions are solutions to a certain differential equation, in which case the book is correct. But we're taking a more general approach. So if it's not zero, it's independent. If it's independent, we don't know. There's examples of functions that are independent, but the Ronskian is zero. Right? I have an example in my notes, the first example ever discovered. Um, I got it from Wikipedia. Um, and so, so it exists, right? There's examples of functions where this is zero and it's actually independent. So not zero, independent. If it's independent, we don't know. So it goes one way. It's a one-way implication. When I first taught this class, I was like, the book is wrong! And I was so upset and I Googled it and I'm like, oh my god, Wikipedia's not wrong. I'm not wrong. What's going on? And the book states the assumption on the functions in a previous page. So I had to like turn the page and then I would have learned that the book was right. So, uh, so all non-zero answers are independent, but not all independents are non-zero answers. Right. So whenever you get a non-zero answer for the Ronskian, it's independent. But if it's independent, it doesn't mean you have a non-zero answer for the Ronskian. Boom, Kyle. Yes, on an interval, right, on an interval. Um, so let's do an example of like a test question. Oh, before we do, before we do, let me just recall some stuff. So recall, just really briefly, just in case you don't know this. Um, if you have the determinant of A, B, C, D, of like a two by two matrix. Let me just refresh your memory on this because maybe you, it's been a while since you've done this. Maybe you've never done it, right? Maybe this is the first time in your life. So basically you do this times this. So you do AD, right, AD. And then anyone know what symbol goes here? Do you, do you? Minus, minus. And then if you want to finish the formula, what would be next? BC, very good, BC, excellent, good. So this is from uh, math. So it's AD minus BC, AD minus BC, AD minus BC. I teach this in pre-calc, in pre-calc uh, we do matrices, so that's, that's maybe where you've seen it. So AD minus BC. All right, let's do like a simple uh, test level question, right, test level question. Well, that's a nice, it's a nice question for your test because Unfortunately, you all only have an hour and 15 minutes for the test. Um, that's not a long time, especially once we get to 4-4, four, four, you'll see the problems are kind of long. So here's a nice, nice question. So prove, it's a proof. So prove that, so let's see, I'll just make them up. Um, f of x equals e to the um, 8x and g of x, great question, equals e to the 6x are linearly independent, independent, ah, I feel so good in here, doesn't it? The, the AC working, so good on the set of real numbers. I'll give you a minute to write it down, then we'll carefully go, go through the proof. There's a bunch of these in the homework. You have to compute a bunch of these. I'm just gonna write redo, so this will be something that you'll want to go over again when you're studying for the test. So last time we did several problems with dependence and independence. But that's what the C's, right? So on the test, it will say to use the definition. That's using the definition. This is different. If you see a question and it says prove independent, all you have to do is compute the Ronskian and say it's not equal to zero. Boom, right? So it's super easy. Usually everyone in the entire class will get this right. Ah, uh, well, not always. Uh, people often forget to say this. So super key. So let's do it, so proof. 
So it's a proof, so we'll write, we'll write proof. It's a good, way, good thing to write. So we can just start by writing W, or we can use like a word. I'm gonna use a word, so like note or observe. Um, I'll just use note. The Ronskian, so W. So we're gonna compute the Ronskian of, of these two functions. So in the first row, you just have the functions. It doesn't matter which one you write first. So I'll just put this one first. So e to the 8x, and this is e to the 6x. So e to the 6x, e to the 6x. Okay, that's the first row, okay, that's the first row. So you always put the functions in the first row. In the second row, you just have to put the derivatives. When you take the derivative of e to the 8x, what, what else are you gonna get out front? An eight. Yeah, where does that come from? What's that from? Do you all know? What rule? Yeah, what rule is that though? Do you all know? The chain rule, yeah. Because the derivative of e to the eight x is e to, it's really e to the eight x times the derivative of the inside, which is eight, right? So it's the chain rule, that's where it comes from. Um, I just wanted to show you that. So, so here it's eight e to the eight x. And this one will be very similar, except we'll have a um, six, yeah, six. 6 e to the 6. Like this is fun. I like I like the I like proofs, right? That's like Yeah, this is, this is this is what it's about right here. Any questions so far on 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 this one? All right, now we're going to use our formula, right? We're going to use this formula, this AD minus BC formula, okay? So when we multiply these, something happens to the exponents. You add them. Yeah. So you add them. Does someone say that? Add. Yeah. Huh? What? <laughs> you sure? You sure? To, to... No, I thought we were subtracting them. So we will. We will. Oh, not yet. No. So you add the x because it's this times this. So you get 6e to the 14x. Now you subtract. There it is. Yeah. No, it's good. It's life. So, so it's 6e to the 14x minus, and then this times this will be um, 8e to also the 14x, right? Because you add the exponents, so we're there. Everyone okay with the, with the addition of the exponents? Any questions on, okay. Yes, yes sir. I had a question on how come we didn't add like another derivative? Oh, because you, okay, so basically because it's two, you just have a two by two, thank you. If it was three, you would, you would do another one. Right, because it has to be a square matrix. Remember, you can only take the determinant of square matrices, so they have to have the same rows and columns. Yeah, we'll do a three by three after this, so you see it. Good question, um, Kyle. No, no, jo Joan, John, Vincent. Oh, what is it? Ryan. Ryan. Good Ryan. Uh, <laughs> how far can we expect? I mean, I'm assuming two by two, three by three. That's it. That's it. That's it. And three by three, even that's dubious because of the time. My night class will totally get a three by three, but you all, I don't know. Like, I, I'm worried about you. I always worry about this class because I have a class right after this. It's like, I mean, your last test, I mean, some of you were here to the very end, right? Like, the last second. All right, all right. So now we subtract these. So six minus eight, that's going to be negative two e to the 14x. Yeah, no bigger than a three by three, Duncan. So we're almost done, right? So the only time people mess up is, is when they, they stop here. All you have to do now is say it's not equal to zero for all x and i. Your i is, is this. So you just have to say not equal to zero for all x in the set of all real numbers. So negative infinity to infinity. So now you, you have to conclude the proof. So you were trying to show they're independent, so you should say that. So hence, the functions are, and it's a lot of writing, but it's good for you, linearly, I'll even spell it, independent. I wasn't going to, on the set of all real numbers. And I guess you could put a period, but we've worked so hard to get to this point. Typically in mathematics, when you finish a proof, you use a symbol, okay? So what symbol should you use? Well, you can make one up, right? You can make one up to finish the proof. The modern way of doing it is a box and it's filled in, right? Because it's typed in books. I don't do that, it's too much work. Um, the old school way of doing it is Q 
E D. Anyone know what that means in Latin? Very good. Yeah, I, that's better than what I was going to say. Uh, do you know what it means, though? Because it was proven. Because it was proven. Thank you. Or that which was demonstrated, maybe? Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Um, so what he said, uh, that's one way to finish it. Uh, I don't use that either. Um, I use a box with an X. I stole that from someone else. So you can make up your own symbol, you know, whatever you like. You know, if you have like a, a symbol, a tattoo, or no, no, no. Yeah. Now, uh, say it was zero for a certain value of x, then you would just adjust the... It means you did it wrong. Oh, okay. Right? So if you get zero here or something, yeah, you did it wrong. So it either is for negative infinity to infinity or... Or it's not. Right, because the question's asking you to prove it, so it's got, it's got to be not zero. So if it is, you messed up somewhere, right? Let's, let's go over it one more time, and then we'll do a harder one. So you're taking the test, you see something like this, it says prove that the functions are independent. So this is different from those problems with the C's. On those it'll say use the definition. So step one, you just write down the Ronsky, and the first row is just these functions here. So it's this one and this one. Then you just take the derivatives. Ryan asked, why do you stop taking derivatives? It's a really good question. Because there's only two functions, so you just take one derivative. If it's three, you go down to the second derivative. It'll become a three by three matrix. Four would be a four by four matrix. Okay, so then it's just this times this. So you add the exponents, 8x plus 6x is 14x, minus, and then this times this, 6x plus 8x is 14x. Six minus eight is negative two, right? You have six of these minus eight of these, so you have negative two of those. You subtract, you get this. The most common mistake is people will stop here and they won't say this so please don't forget to say this. if you forget to do this I mean if it's worth 10 points you'll lose two or something you know no big deal hence the functions are linearly independent on on that and then you don't have to put a symbol but it's good form it's good to finish your proof uh, with, with the symbol with the symbol so any questions on this one? we should do another one because we have time right maybe we should do uh, one more a three by three uh, for practice, just in case. I mean, maybe I could. I mean, I could put it on your test. I don't know. I haven't even thought about it. What, your test is not until. Oh wow! Never mind. Okay. It's, it's coming. It's 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 in this month, right? It's it's the day before spring break. Sorry. So. <laughs> oh, I know. I always thought. Oh, who cares? That way, people can study during spring break. People do terrible. Yeah. I gave like a stats test after spring break. I'm like, oh, that way they have the whole break to study. No, no, people forgot like the easy stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah, I guess they didn't study during the break, yeah. I do a lot of math during spring break. Okay, let's do another one. That's like my catch up time. So let's prove that, uh, let's see, uh, I guess we don't even have to call them f, g, or h. Let's just do e to the 2x, e to the 6x, e to the, what's another, what's a funny number? 69. No, no, it's too big. <laughs> 69x? That's huge! I don't want to use the calculator. Oh, let's put a negative number there. Negative 12. Negative 12, oh, all right, I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> <sighs> That's gonna be tough. Okay, I've never done this before, so this will be interesting. It should work. So prove that these are linearly independent over this set here. All right, we're gonna go through this really slowly. <clears throat> are we ever gonna get non all real number? No, you should always get, yeah, it should always be not equal to zero. And, I, and it'll probably be easy. These are the easy ones. You have some other ones in your homework. They're kind of annoying. I mean, like, are we ever going to get a question where it's not negative infinity to infinity? No. Okay. No, 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 no. Not in this class. Mm -mm. Yeah, we try to keep it. I mean, yeah. Mm -mm. This is DE. Mm -hmm. Are we going to get, like, say, a function, like, with, like, say, it was like squared minus 2x and then another function? Something different? Yeah, in the homework, you'll have some different stuff. We'll look at it today. It's really simple, okay. though. Mm -hmm. There's one with, with uh, L and X here in the homework. That one's a real pain. It's so difficult, like it doesn't fit on paper. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it later. All right, so proof. It's really bad. So proof. So we'll start, just like before, by writing down the, the Ronsky. Right, so note, or uh, observe. Or no, no let's, do, let's do note. Let's, go, let's st stay consistent. N-O-T-E. Notice W is equal to, so we have this symbol here. And so in the first row, we have just, just the functions. So it'll be this, this, and this. This is going to be fun because there's a negative involved. It's kind of, I've never done one of these with a negative. I just, just never tried to do it. And this is this. So that is the first 
first row of the matrix. Uh, by the way, if you know other ways of computing the determinant, go for it, right? I know there's other ways of doing it. You can use any method you want. And the second row, we have the derivative. So it'll just be 2e to the 2x. So 2e to the 2x, 6e to the 6x. And then this one is the same, except negative 12. Yeah, it's going to be negative. So negative 12 e to the negative 12x. Yep. So that one is the same. And then we have to do it again, right? Because it's 3, so we want to get a 3 by 3 matrix. What would, what would end up being here in this case? 4 e to the 2x. Good. Because you get 2 times 2, right? So 4, I've got to be careful here, e to the 2x. This one will be 36, right? 6 times 6. 36 e to the 6x. And this one will turn into a positive 144. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Why did we, why'd we do 12? It's all right. It's too late. We've started. Could have done 69. That would have been worse. <laughs> That's even worse. 169. No. Okay. So we're here. Any questions up to here on this one? Okay. So there's six different ways to do this. Well, the way we're going to do it. So we're going to use something called cofactor expansion. So basically that means that you can pick any row or column. Uh, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six ways to do it. It's also called Laplacian expansion. Let's just pick the first row. So let me just show you how to do it. So you, we're going across the first row. So you write this down. So always write that down. So e to the 2x. Now if you know Calc 3, it's like finding the cross product. You can do plus minus plus. You can do it that way. So it'll be plus minus plus. I'm going to do it a harder way on purpose, just to show you the more general way. So then you always have a negative one here, always. You can skip this if you're doing it plus. If you do plus minus plus, you can skip this. And then it's row plus column. So it's the first row, first column. So one plus one. Okay. You'll see the pattern in a minute. Always. It's always there, no matter what. So it's this. And then it's negative 1 to the row plus column. Notice it's going to end up being positive 1, right? Because 1 plus 1 is 2. Negative 1 to an even power is 1. Then you write down a determinant. And you write down the determinant of the remaining submatrix. This is the general way of doing it. So it's this. It's negative 1. And it's always first row, first column. So 1 plus 1. And then whatever's left, I'm going to write it there. 6e to the 6x negative 12 e to the negative 12x. This is the real way of doing it. This is good to learn because if you take linear algebra, you, you'll you do it this way. 36 e to the 6x. And then the last one would be 144 e to the negative 12x. 44 e to the negative 12x. Okay. Any questions so far? I'm going to go to the next one now. Yes? Is that a top row subtraction or is that like two separate terms with the negative 12? Sorry, say that again. That here, no, this. Yes. Sorry. Yes, because yeah, I'll write smaller. So one four four e to the. Oh, I already forgot. Negative twelve x. See, see what's left it goes over there. So negative twelve x. Thank you, Christian. No, uh, Michael. Mike, yeah. Mike. Mike. Thank you, Mike. Christian. Yes. Right. Check this out. Then, so if you know Calc 3, it's plus minus plus, but I'm just going to do plus. So plus, and then it's this one, right? It's this one, and it's always negative 1, and it's row plus column. So you're in the first row, second column. So it'll be 1 plus 2. And then you write down the determinant of the remaining submatrix, right? So in this case, you cross out this, so it's whatever's left goes there. So 2e to the 2x, 4e to the 2x, which had longer arms. 2e to the 2x, 4e to the 2x, and then that stuff there, what, what, that, that, what it, what's left there. So negative 12, e to the negative 12x. So negative 12, e to the negative 12x. And that piece there, 144e to the negative 12x. 144e to the negative 12x. Plus, one more. Again, you can skip the negative ones if you just do plus, minus, plus. But it's, it's good to know it the other way, right? This way. This is like the real way. 
Then you do this one, so e to the negative 12x. Then you have the negative 1. What would, what would the exponent be? What plus what in this case? Anyone? 1 plus 3. One plus three. Very good. Very good, because it's the first row, third column, right? This is, again, it's a beautiful way of doing it. This always works, even for a 4x4 four four or 5x5. Five five. And then, again, so you cross those out. So then you take the determinant of the remaining submatrix, so that, that's what's left. So we have that, so 2e to the 2x, 6e to the 6x, so 2e to the 2x, 6e to the 6x, and then, and then we have this, 4e to the 2x, 36e to the 6x, so 4e to the 2x, 36e to, let me pause here and go over it again. <clears throat> Looks really scary, but um, like if someone just walked in the room off the street, be like, whoa, what is that? Like, you know, what's the E mean? E for evil. No, it's not. It's actually E for that guy, right? Isn't it? I think it's Euler or Euler. Yeah, right? Because doesn't his name start with an E? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's named after him. I, I don't know. Why not use a capital E, right? I mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Euler formula? E to the... Oh yeah, that's why. Oh yeah, that's why. Yeah, e to the pi i is negative one. Yeah, that's a that's a formula from from math. Yeah, that's scribbled inside bathroom stalls at UCF in the man in the men's bathroom. Okay, um, <laughs> so so you pick any row or column. We picked we picked the first row. So it's this, and then it's always negative one, first row, first column. So one plus one, and then we're left with that. Looks okay. Then we go to this one, check, first row, second column, so 1 plus 2, and then we're left with that, looks okay. And then we go to this one, so that's here, then it's negative 1, and then it's uh, 1 plus 3, first row, third column, and we're left with that, so it looks, it looks okay. Um, whenever you have negative 1 to an even power, it's 1. Negative one to an odd power, it's negative one. So, any questions on this method? Anyone ever seen this before? Anyone ever, like, never seen this? You have seen it. Oh, okay. Anyone never seen this before, like, ever? Okay. That's oh, good. Does it make sense? Oh, it's worth it. Like, this, if you learn anything today, this is worth it. Like, it's good. It's good math. It's linear algebra, right? Linear algebra. So, I know there's another way of doing this by like, drawing arrows and stuff. Uh, some guy was showing me that, and my Gerardo was showing me that. No. No, it wasn't. Yeah, it was Gerardo. He was showing me my Calc 3 class. Oh, there's another way of doing it. But that fails if you get a bigger matrix. So this always works. We could have used this row, too. Is or this one. The multiply diagonal? Yeah. Yeah, he showed me, but I forgot. So, yeah. Don't tell him that. But, yeah. Okay, so this is equal to... Um, so this is 1, right? Positive 1. So it'll be e to the 2x. Oh, these have names. Let me just tell you the names. This determinant, this determinant is called a minor. M-I-N-O-R, extra life knowledge. This is called a minor. And when you put the negative one in front of it like this, this is called a cofactor. Yeah, fancy words. So we do this times this. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Six times 144. Anyone, anyone know <laughs> what that is? 864. Eight, eight. 864. Okay, so it's 864 E. And then what would the exponent be in this case? Negative 6x, very good, because you have to add. And then it's minus, but there's already a minus here. Anyone know what 12 times uh, 36 is? 432. 432, thank you. So plus 432. Yeah, this is probably why I always avoid uh, big numbers, uh, but it's too late. We have, there's no turning, yeah. So it's a plus because of that. Because of the minus here. Yeah, you see it? Because it's minus and a negative. Good question, Ryan. Yeah, minus and a negative. Fun times. Okay, so again, it was just this. This became 1 because it's an even power. So this times this is this. Minus and it's negative, so it becomes plus. Is this going to turn into a plus? Or is it going to stay a plus or turn into a minus? Minus. minus. Good. Because it's, it's an odd power. So it's minus e to the 6x. Uh. Oh, I can do this math. 2 times 144 is 288, right? Okay, 2, 288, <laughs> 288. e to the negative 10x, 
right? Because 2 plus negative 12 is negative 10. And then minus and minus is plus again, so 48, got this, e to the negative 10x, arithmetic master, right? 48, 48. Is the next one plus or minus in this case? Plus, plus. yeah, so it's plus, because it's an even power, right? So plus e to the negative 12x times, I'm gonna get, I think I have the calculator. I'm like, yeah, I do. it's really old and dirty, wow. 72, so 72 e to the 8x minus 24 e to the 8x, 24 e to the 8x. Duncan, hey, look up, I'm sorry. Good morning, all right. Sorry. <laughs> Any questions, any questions so far on, on this one? Any questions at all? Yeah. Uh, Kramer's rule will solve a system of equations, but uh, no, so no. no. Good question, though. No. No. Mm -mm. So I'm going to add these. I'm not going to take any chances. I'm not going to be a hero. There's no, I mean, there's no need to. Yeah. Why is the last term negative? It's always supposed to be negative. So it's this times this minus this times this. The, the only reason it's positive here is, is because it was already a negative. You see it? Yeah. Good. Cody, right? No. Kyle. Kyle's close. Oh, there's two Kyles. Yeah, good, good, all right. Uh, so I'm gonna add these up. So eight, eight, six, four, whoa, eight, six, four plus 432, 1296, 1296. That's right, okay, so, so e to the two x times 1296 e to the negative six x. I, I could have skipped a step, but I didn't want to. Minus e to the six x. 288 plus 48, I mean, you could probably do it in your head, but it's too early. Um, three, 336, 336, e to the negative 10x, then plus, great marker, e to the negative 12x, uh, 72 minus 12, I'm not gonna take any chances, I'm losing any more points, 48, 48. Did I make any mistakes last time, by the way? I didn't? Sorry. All right, so this is equal to, it's good, no mistakes. <laughs> These, you add the exponents, we get 1296, 1296 e to the negative 4x uh, minus 336 e to the negative 4x. Notice they all have the same exponent. That's how you'll know if you're doing it right. If you get to the end and you have different exponents, you know you messed up. Um, that's an easy way to check, plus 48 e to the negative 4x. I'm going to combine all of these. So 1296 minus 336 plus 48, 1008. So 1008 e to the negative 4x. We're almost done. Let me just pause and, and let you catch up. So yeah, it makes a big difference when you make the numbers bigger, um, the 12. I was going to do like e to the x, e to the 2x, and e to the 3x, but I'm really glad we didn't use 69. That's a really big number. We'd have gotten like, you know, or 2020 or something ridiculous. Ah, it's warm, but it's good. Any, any questions? Any questions? Are we done? What, what's missing? Not equal to zero. Good, Robert. Yeah, not equal to zero for all x, right? For all x and the interval. Hence, the functions are independent on the interval. So you're supposed to say that. So hence, uh, I'll use a different word. How about whence? Whence? Whence the functions, you could say therefore, thus. Whence the functions are, I think I'm using it right. Whence the functions are linearly independent on negative infinity to infinity. And it's good to finish our proofs with an appropriate symbol, so I'll use my symbol. I like using this one, so. Yeah, that's the nice thing about math and proofs. You get to use fancy words like whence, thus, therefore. That's, that's, that's good, It's good. So when you go to parties and stuff and you talk to people, they think you read a lot, but not really, right? It's just, it's, just, it's like, oh yeah. Draw fancy symbols. Yeah, yeah, for all. <laughs> Do you remember what this one means, this one? There exists. Oh, this is the N one. Yeah, this is the N one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Any questions on this stuff? We're, we're almost done with this section, so it's nice, nice problem. 
All right, so I think now we should talk about DEs a little bit. Um, there's some theory surrounding DEs, but we're going to finish this. And this theory uh, is going to map out what we're doing for the entire uh, second exam. This section, if you look in the book, is really big. Uh, it's like multiple pages, so there's still some notes, not that many, it's not even half a page. After this, after we go over these notes, uh, I'm going to pull down the homework and we're going to go through all of it. I'm just going to show you how to do all of it. Um, it's not that bad. A lot of it's really easy. It's really, it looks complicated, but it's super easy. So, so we have some more notes. And these notes are scattered in the book. Like if you're reading the book, they're all over the place, right? So I tried to like condense them into like this. So we're going to be focusing on linear DEs, in particular higher order, like second order, third order, fourth order. So let's focus on the linear nth order DE. So nth order DE. This takes a bit to write down, um, but I kind of have to write it down in order to like explain what's, what's going on. So I'm going to write it down twice in two different ways. So one, so we have a linear nth order DE, so we'll start with some function of x. So a sub n of x, this could be anything. For us, it's always going to be a number, really. Uh, but it could be a function of x times the nth derivative. So we use that Leibniz notation. So a, a function of x times the nth derivative. And then here we'll have the n minus 1th derivative. But I don't really want to write that, so I'm just going to put the three dots. So the ellipses. And we'll pick back up at a sub 1 of x, the first derivative. And then we'll go to a sub 0 of x. And then the 0th derivative, the 0th derivative is the original function, right? So y. And this is equal to 0. So this is a linear nth order differential equation. And it's equal to 0. So whenever it's equal to 0, we say it's homogeneous. You might say, what? That's not what we were doing before. The homos before were different. That's the whole thing with the alpha and the tx and the ty. It's a different homogeneous. <laughs> so unfortunately, we use the same word in math for two completely different and unrelated things. So, so whenever it's equal to 0, it's homogeneous. Equal to 0, homogeneous. I'm going to write down the same thing again. Except I'm going to put something here besides you. I'm going to put g of x. I'm just going to write it again, a sub n of x, just so we have it on the board. Plus, dot, 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 plus a sub 1 of x, dy dx, plus a sub 0 of x, y equals g of x. And this is good. It's good to have this in your notes because this way you don't have to read the book. I mean, you should. It's good to read the book, right? But it's everything that's in the book in like a one little spot, which I think is really useful if you want to learn everything. So this is not equal to zero for any x, right? So this is the opposite of homogeneous. So it's not homogeneous or not what? No, I don't think so. But I mean, is it? It's, it's non-homogeneous. I've never heard anyone say that. Um, what is it? Nomogeneous? Is that a real word? Or no? Oh, okay. oh no, it is now. Nomogeneous. Non-homogeneous. So why would it not be heterogeneous? I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't, I don't know. What does hetero mean? Well, if, if homo is one or the same, and hetero would be. Different. I guess it could be, but I've never I've never read that in a book. I mean, I guess yeah. I guess you could call it that if you want. I mean, I've never heard anyone call it that, but you could. I mean, you could. Yeah, why not, right? I don't know. Also, some people say homogenous. I don't know if that's correct. It makes me, makes me think of milk. Because, like, homogenized milk, right, is the thing. <laughs> like, you see it on the milk. So, I don't know. All right, so now that we have all of this on the board, I can go through the theory. Just a couple of remarks running the theory. And this will, like, put everything together. Um, it looks really complicated, but, but it's not. It's not. It's really not that bad. So, a couple of remarks. So, I'm going to do a line here. What did you call it again, Robert? No more genius. Oh, that's fun. Like, no more, no more. All right, so remarks. So any, any set, so anytime you have, or I could say list, but any set y1 to yn of linearly independent solutions. So whenever you have linearly independent solutions to this equation, so any set y1 through yn of linearly 
independent solutions, linearly independent solutions, solutions to, oh, 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 um, I, I, I made a little mistake, a small mistake. I'm going to go back here, okay, and do this. I'm going to call that I. I have to call that I because I want to refer to this. So, to so one. So anytime you have a linearly independent set of solutions to this equation, okay, and we'll see examples soon, uh, we have what's called a fundamental set of solutions. So it's called, fancy word, a fundamental, fundamental set. You see this in the homework, set of solutions. of solutions. Okay, fundamental set of solutions. And the thing is, you can always find one, okay? So I should write that down as well for completeness. It takes an extra five seconds and you never know, like maybe in 10 years you'll be looking at these notes, right? Can't always, can always find one. You never know, right? You never know what you'll be in 10 years. I went to this estate sale once. It's like a thing where they have where people die, you know, and they sell the stuff. Yeah, and the guy was like this nuclear physicist and he had his notebooks there. And inside his notebooks, he had DE stuff and I could understand it. And I'm like, whoa, this is what we do in class. It was like his private research stuff. He had some of this stuff and he had the stuff we're doing on the third test. Yeah, he worked at, uh, I think it was Brookhaven National Laboratory or something. Like he died, I think. Huh? No, and they were only a dollar. And I drove home and I had so much regret. I bought a bunch of his physics books. I have like physics books from like the 30s and 40s, like signed with the original receipts. But I didn't buy his notes and they just threw them away. I know. I know, it's really sad. Anyways, anyways, so, so you never know, right? I mean, that guy was like in his 80s and he was doing DE. And I'm like, oh, this is the stuff we do in class. And like, he's like a nuclear physicist. And you know, this is like his private stuff. Like, oh, it's kind of cool. I don't know, made this feel more important. So any set of linearly independent solutions uh, is called that. So we'll come back to this and I'll give you an example in a minute. Two, two, the general solution. So general solution. To one. So the general solution is an equation that gives you all the solutions. It's, it's all the answers. So the general solution to one is, well, basically it's a linear combination of your fundamental set. So it's y equals c1y1 plus cnyn. Now remember, that's called a linear combination when you have the c's in front of stuff. So it's a linear combination of the y's, uh, where, you know, y1 is a fun, fundamental set, fundamental set, fundamental set, fundamental set. Um, three, last one, then we'll do an example. I think I can find one. I think I can dig one up from my notes just to show you the main idea behind what we're doing. So three. The general solution to two, this is harder. So the general solution to two is, so it has the form yc plus yp, and I'll show you, what, I'll explain what each piece means. This is like everything we're doing. Uh, once you know how to do all of this, you're ready for the test. <clears throat> yc plus yp, where, and I'll explain what these are, so it's a sum of solutions. Basically, you can think of this as like the homogeneous solution, loosely speaking, and this is the non-homogeneous solution, loosely speaking. So the solution to two is like the non-homogeneous, the, homoge the homogeneous part plus the non-homogeneous part, where, so yc is equal to c1, y1. So yc is this. It's the same thing. We just give it a different name, right? Uh, so, and then this, this has a name. Your book calls this the complementary function. They call it the complementary function. You can also call it the complementary solution. I like to call it that. I also, really, it's the homogeneous solution, right? So you can call it the complementary function, complementary solution, homogeneous solution. And YP, YP is a sum 
of particular solutions. That means it doesn't have C's, okay? There's no C's here. Uh, it'll be like sine x, e to the x. So particular, so th particular solutions are those that don't have C's. So I'm gonna write that down. Those free from arbitrary parameters, so those that don't have C's. So arbitrary parameters. So that's where we're going, and I'll give you a quick example before we continue. I'll let you write. I'm going to give you an example here, a, a, just a contrived one. I can, I can pull one out. Oh, I have one in my notes, um, but it's not very good. I'll, I'll get one from, from the homework that's a little bit uh, better. Uh, and then, then we'll just do homework. I'm going to show you how to do all of the homework. We're not actually solving DEs in this section. Oh, oh. So, so this, this is, uh, so this, this is 4-3. So 4, 3 is this. 4, 3, it's always equal to 0. It's really simple. Uh, some of you have already started working on it. Um, it's not bad. Uh, uh, it's, it's, you can like knock out problems really quickly. You can do some of them in your head. Like it's like you, you get really good at it. I signed tons of homework, which is good. You get a lot of practice, but it's not, it's not bad. So 4, 3, it's always equal to 0. And, and then so this, the YP thing, so YP, this is, 4, 4, and 4, 6. Right. 4, 7 will be extra credit. We talk, that way we have a review day. On the syllabus it says 4, 7 is the day before the test. Scratch that, right? That'll be like a free day. We'll take any extra time we have and just like do some review problems for the test. I'd like to have a full review for the test. That'd be awesome. Like what we do, like one from 4, 4, one from 4, 6, a couple from 4, 3, review the Ronskians with some independence. I mean, that'd be perfect in a perfect world. So 4-4 four, four and 4-6 four, are the same thing. 4-4, four, four, basically your G is going to be like E sine, cosine. 4-6, anything's fair game. You can have ln, secant. You might say, why don't we just do 4-6 and skip 4-4? Four, four? It's because in 4-6 you have to integrate. <laughs> and the integrals can get really hard. So 4-6 requires that we're able to integrate some stuff. So there's only seven homework problems in 4-6. That tells you something. It's like, <laughs> they're kind of like, uh, they're a bit epic. They're kind of, they're kind of long. Um, let, me, let me give you a simple example. So just so you kind of understand what's going on here. Like, I'll just pick one here from 4-4 from, from four, four just to show you. So say like you were trying to solve, um, that's a bad example. Um, okay, say you were trying to, uh, yeah, say you were trying to solve this, um, one-fourth y double prime uh, plus y prime plus y equals x squared minus 2x. Say you had to solve this. This is a problem from 4-4. Four, four. I think it's number 3. Say you were trying to solve this, right? So what you would do is you would do some work. Okay, I won't go through the work. It's a bit much. Uh, and, you would get, and you would get the following... Um, I can't understand my notes. Oh, here it is. Okay, you would get this. You would get yc c1 e to the negative 2x. I think my notes are wrong, but this is correct. So via, via some magic, you would get this, right? You would get this. That would be your yc. So basically, you would set this equal to 0, and you would get this. And then you would get yp. Using the method of 4, 4, uh, your yp would be x squared minus 4x plus 7 halves. So you would use methods of 4, 4 to get this. So 4, 3 gives you this. 4, 4 gives you this, right? And then so the final answer, the final answer, you just add them up, right? It's, it's yc plus yp. So the final answer would be y equals c1 e to the negative 2x plus c2x e to the negative 2x uh, plus x squared minus 4x plus 7 halves. On the test, on these questions, I'll give you the steps, right? It makes it easier to grade. So like part A is find this, part B is like start to find this, part C is finish finding this, part D is write the answer down. So, so you just add them up. Okay, so this is 4-3 and this is 4-4. Four, four. So that's where we're going, that's what we're doing. That's the only thing we're doing. So this section is like an outline, it's like a, I hate to use the word roadmap of what we're, what we're doing.